All right, in this video, I'm going to do another example of finding a partial fraction decomposition. And in this case, I'm going to do the 4x plus 9 over x minus 1 times x plus 1 uh, times x plus 4. And the same thing as before, I'm going to rewrite my original expression. So we've got 4x plus 9, we've got x minus 1, x plus 1, uh, x plus 4. This is nice because the denominator is already factored in all these linear terms. And again, what we're going to do is we're just going to try to break that up, in this case, into three separate fractions. One of my denominators will be x minus 1, another denominator will be x plus 1, and then I'll have a fraction with denominator x plus 4. So every factor gets its own little fraction. On top, I just stick constants, generic constants, a, b, and c. And again, our, our goal in this problem is to figure out a, b, and c. So, same way I did my other example, I get rid of my uh, denominators, and I basically just multiply both sides by whatever the denominator is um, of my original rational function. So I'm going to multiply by x minus 1, x plus 1, x plus 4. But again, if you do it on the left, well, we've got to do it on the right. So let's see if I can't squeeze it in there. Uh, x minus 1 times uh, x plus 1 time, so it looks like we're going to run off here, uh, x plus 4, that's okay, we'll come back to that. On the left side, notice everything would cancel out. We would just be left with our 4x plus 9, and again, that's the whole reason why I do this in the first place. Um, on the right side, when we distribute things out, um, when I take, again, we have to distribute all three of these factors to each one of the terms inside. When I multiply x minus 1, x plus 1, x plus 4 to the first term, the x minus 1's would cancel, and we would be left with a times x plus 1 times x plus 4. For our second term, when we distribute all that, the x plus 1's would cancel, and well, we would be left with x minus 1 and x plus 4. And then when we distribute all three of those factors to my third term, the x plus 4's would cancel, and we would be left with c times x minus 1 times x plus 1. Okay, now again, we can do this process of equating coefficients, but I recognize that all of these terms are linear, so I'm going to use my little shortcut like I did in my other example, and I'm going to plug in clever values of x that will simplify things down. And I think the values of x we should use, um, notice if we use x equals negative 1, I think that's going to get rid of a couple terms. If we use x equals negative 4, that's going to help us get rid of some other terms. And I think if we also use x equals positive 1, that's going to help us get rid of some of our terms. So I'm just thinking what makes you know the uh, each one of these factors 0. Well, let's start with x equals negative 1. So if I use x equals negative 1, again, I plug it in everywhere. So on the left side, we would get 4 times negative 1, which would be negative 4 plus 9. Let me use my other pen here. Uh, if we plug in negative 1, we would get negative 4 plus 9. Notice if we plug negative 1 in on the right side, we would get a 0 in our, as, in the x plus, for the x plus 1 when we plug in negative 1. So really, we're just going to have a times 0, which is going to go away. We would have b times, let's see, negative 1 minus 1 and negative 1 plus 4. But then notice also, uh, when, we, when we plug in negative 1 into the very last set of parentheses, we're going to get 0 again. So really the only thing I'm going to be left with, let's see, on the left we've got negative 4 plus 9, which is 5. On the right side, the, you know, the, the, the terms involving a and c are gone. And then we've got b times, let's see, well, negative 1 minus 1 is negative 2, negative 1 plus 4 is 3, so we have negative 2 times positive 3, which would be negative 6. And if we divide both sides by negative 6, we get our b value of basically negative 5 over 6. All right, so there's, a, there's one of our constants. I'm going to do the exact same thing here. Um, let's just simply now, so we used x equals negative 1. Let's plug in x equals negative 4. On the left side, we'll get 4 times negative 4 plus 9. 
On the right side, when we plug negative 4 in, we're going to get a 0 for our first term. Notice we'll also get a 0 for our second term. But then we'll be left with c times uh, negative 4 minus 1. And then we would have negative 4 plus 1. So if we solve for c, we've got negative 16 plus 9. Negative 16 plus 9 would be negative 7. Let's see, we've got a negative negative 4 minus 1 would be negative 5. We're going to have a negative 3 in a second set of parentheses. So negative 5 times negative 3 would be positive 15. And now if we divide both sides, we'll simply get our c value to be uh, negative 7 over 15. All right, so we've got, a, we've got another one of our values here. Let's repeat this process one more time. Uh, I'm going to plug in x equals 1 now. So if we plug in x equals 1, we would have 4 plus 9 on the left side of our equation. We would get a times 1 plus 1 times 1 plus 4. And again, notice if I plug 1 in, my second term is going to be 0. If I plug 1 in at the very end, my third term is going to be 0. So we're left with 13 on the left. We've got a, we've got 1 plus 1, which is 2, times 5, which is 10. And if we divide both sides, we'll get a has value 13 over 10. So now we've figured out everything. We've figured out our a, our b, our c. So it says our partial fraction decomposition, if we rewrite you know, the original stuff, we've now figured out a. It would be 13 over 10. And again, that's all over x minus 1, plus the b value over x plus 1, plus the c value over x plus 4. And again, let's see, we figured out the c value was negative 7 over 15. So I'll drop that in there. And let's see, where's our other one? We figured out our b value to be negative 5 over 6. So that's what goes over the x plus 1, um, negative 5 over 6. And now we figured out our partial fraction decomposition of this original rational expression. So again, you could get common denominators, write all of this back as a nice single fraction, and you would see that you get this original expression, uh, this original rational expression back. But this would now be our final answer. This would be the partial fraction decomposition.